Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the campus minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something new. Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the campus minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something new. Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the campus minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something new.
Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the campus minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something new. Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the campus minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something. Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the campus minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something new.
Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the campus minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something new.
conceal it, seal it for thy courts above. Good morning. Glad you could join us here at the Kingston Church of Christ for our worship service. Welcome. It is really good to have you. I know that you long to be able to be together and connect and we are hoping for that day. And you perhaps feel like you are in a wilderness. You don't need to worry. God works in wildernesses too. In Mark chapter 1, we are able to see about the ministry of John the Baptist and where it took place, a very odd location. It says in verse 1, the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. So we see here that John the Baptist did not preach in a synagogue. He didn't preach at the temple. He was in a wilderness. Nonetheless, the ministry of Jesus flourished. He preached about a coming Messiah and he prepared the way for the Messiah. So God can meet you where you are and I hope that during this worship service you will feel his presence because God is with you. And today we'll be hearing from Mikhail Price who is the campus minister and he'll be preaching on let your yes be yes. That's right. So I'm going to ask that you prepare your hearts for worship as we continue to uh, listen to the word of God as we continue to meditate on the scriptures. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we ask that you be with us today. Help us as we worship you, Lord, that we will understand that you're with us, that we will feel your presence. And indeed, our fellowship, our, our worship will be enriching. Mm -hmm. I pray, Lord, that the uh, service that is provided today will really meet the needs. Be with Mikhail as he preaches your word, that you will help him to say the words that really teach and that instruct and that convict. And I pray that indeed we will be filled today because of your word. Let your Holy Spirit be with us. And as we sing songs to you, may we connect with you on a deeper level. Thanks so much for your love and your mercy and your grace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. To pray, to the river to pray. Well, I went down to the river to pray. Well, I went down to the river to pray. It felt so good that I stayed all day. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. And that's not all, and that's not all, there's more besides, there's more besides, and that's not all, there's more besides, and that's not all, there's more besides, I've been to the river and I've been baptized, all my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. 
street. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been Good morning, everyone. It is great to be able to meet with you like this for another Sunday service. My name is Michael Price, and I'm going to tell you a story today of how God has blessed me. Truthfully, God has blessed everyone, and He wants to bless you even more. But there is a door that is blocking people from the rest of God's blessings. And today, I'd like to give you a key to that door. Have you ever promised God that if he did something for you, that you would do something for him? I'm sure we all have. Brothers, sisters, and friends, today we will be, we will be looking at the third of the Ten Commandments, which says, You will not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name and what the Bible has to say about making vows that we are not prepared to keep. God values faithfulness. And in Psalm 18, verse 25, David writes, the fit To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. And Paul the Apostle wrote in 1 Corinthians 4, and verse 2, he says, now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. So this is much as much about ourselves showing faithfulness to God and he in turn showing faithfulness to us as it is about us keeping our vows. Let us look at Matthew 5 verses 33 to 37 and I will read from the NIV. It says, Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one here white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond, beyond, anything beyond this comes from the evil one. We see that Jesus, in full knowledge and understanding of the commandments and of scripture, instructing his hearers, do not swear an oath at all. This protects us from calling the Lord's name in vain, which is to do so for flippant reasons or irreverently. And we find that there, the practice of the religious Jews at the time was to make vows. They would make vows by certain holy objects, but according to Marty Solomon from his podcast, Be My Discipleship, the person making the vow could change the vow if he swore by something else. For example, if he swore by the altar, he could change his vow if he swore by the sacrifice of the altar. People have a knack for changing something that was meant to be good into something that is now evil. Take, for instance, the act of crossing our fingers. According to Sarah Colin, in her article, 
The surprising history behind the double meaning of crossing our fingers. She writes, Crossing your fingers originally meant you wanted God's protection and not just good luck. Christians would cross their fingers at the mention of any major threat. This could be sickness, Satan, misfortune, witchcraft, and more. It is only with time that the meaning behind this symbol has lost its seriousness. For example, the 14th century Christians would probably find it a little dramatic that you crossed your fingers to ensure that your favorite sports team won. But she indicates that people also cross their fingers while lying. She adds, why we cross our fingers while telling a lie has even murkier origins. But many believe this has to do with God too. Where crossing your fingers for luck is a way to ask for God's protection, crossing your fingers behind your back when you tell a lie could mean you're asking for God's forgiveness. So there are people who feel that their word is not their bond if they had their fingers crossed behind their backs when they said it. In the same way, religious Jews found ways to get out of keeping their vows even when they swore by the temple. Jesus taught us that we need to keep our word and not to swear at all. If we are people of our word, then we would not need to swear. Satan wants to twist something good into something evil. And Jesus says that anything beyond a yes has come from Satan. He is a father of lies and wants to make the children of God out to be liars. He wants to make us look like we have no integrity. So do not give him an opportunity. Follow the instructions of Jesus and simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. One of my points is that we should think before we commit. In verses 34 to 36, we see the caution against making oaths. It says, But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one here white or black. We can compare what is said in verses 34 of Matthew 5 to what is said in Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 5, which says, It is better to not make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. We see the words oath and vow used, and you may be wondering, well, what is the difference? Well, a vow is defined as a solemn promise, and it is seen as giving your word. An oath, however, is a solemn promise invoking a divine witness regarding one's future actions or behavior or what they have to say. And we see a definition of swearing which says to make a solemn statement or promise undertaking to do something or affirming that something is the case. So solemnity Solemn is defined as a deep sincerity. We see also that the definition of swearing is to utter an oath. So an oath, so making an oath is what it means to swear. And we see that Jesus tells us that we should not swear an oath. So he says you can give your word, but you must not swear. And in Numbers verses 30 and 2, we see that if you do make a vow, it must be something that you do everything to keep ensure that you keep it. And with this, we can see things like marital vows being understandable. And they sh those vows should be kept for the occasion such as weddings. We need to think before we give our word what we can do within what timeline and if we are willing to carry it out in spite of anything that may come up. You know, before becoming a disciple, persons would have done 
a Bible study that is called Counting the Cost. This study would allow persons to understand what being a Christian really entails. They would look at things such as the requirements of them with their relationship with Christ, with the church and its members, and the obstacles that we would face in the journey of Christendom, in being a Christian. And, you know, becoming a Christian is a big commitment, and it's not a decision that should be taken lightly. Because once you say those words that Jesus is your Lord, your commitment begins. You are then baptized, and your life and the journey of Christendom starts. The life that you live will show whether or not the vow that you made was kept, that you intend to keep Jesus' teachings, his expectations, and adhere to scripture. It is not about how you felt at the time that you made your vow or how serious you were in your mind, that is your intentions, but it is about your actions. Did you fulfill what you said you would, even though you, f you came across obstacles and trials along the way? If your feelings changed, did you still carry out your word because you said you would? You can gain a lot of insight into someone's character by how quick they are to give their word, even when they don't know if they can carry it through or not. And you should be wary to enter into an arrangement with such a person. For example, if someone agrees to pay you by check and the check bounces, you would not want a replacement check from this person. You'd want them to repay you by cash. As the saying goes, once bitten, twice shy. However, there are times when Christians give their word, they make promises or swear oaths and do not fulfill them and still expect persons to trust them. That needs to stop. God does not take his promises lightly and neither should we. We shouldn't just bank on the fact that because we are Christians or because we have a relationship with God that people will simply believe us for these reasons. People judge us by whether or not we do the things we say we will. They look at our words and watch our actions to see if they align. And if they don't, then they deem us as trustworthy or not. James 5 verse 12 says, Above all my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else, all you need to say is simply yes or no, otherwise you will be condemned. It is not that all swearing is sinful because if it is rightly done, it can be a part of our religious worship because in it we give God the glory due to his name. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6 verse 13 where it says, Fear the Lord your God, serve him only and take your oaths in his name. But why do people swear? Well, let us look in Hebrews 6 and verse 16, which reads, People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. So we know that people want to show without a shadow of a doubt that what they're saying is true and that what they intend to do, that they will stick to it by swearing an oath. But why do we do our oaths in the name of God? Why is it only by Him that we make an oath? Well, the Lord's name is sovereign. You see, our name marks us and it identifies us. Over time, People get to know us and our name embodies who we are. Think of someone whom you love deeply. Your child, your grandchild, a parent, a sibling, or a spouse. 
the name of that person represents to you more than you can describe. Some of you may have heard last week that I am recently engaged. And whenever I hear the name Jody, I am overcome with joy, with good thoughts, with fond memories because I cannot separate her name from who she is. A whole flood of emotions come and they are all good. And I cannot help but smile. Joy comes to me at the sound of her name. Names are precious, which is why we do not like when our name is mispronounced, misspelled, or made fun of. There is a level of respect that many of us want to be used with our names. We do not want it included in any slander. We want people to say it well and to spell it well and to ensure that it is not used incorrectly or in a lie. Do we show this kind of reverence with God's name? Let us look at Exodus 3, where God speaks to Moses from a burning bush. Moses asks God in Exodus 3 and verses 13 to 14. In Exodus 3 and verses 13 to 14, it reads, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God replies with the famous words, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God names himself as the sovereign, self-existent one. In fact, the covenant name YHWH is probably connected to the Hebrew verb to be. God is that he is. That is his name. We see the same thing in Exodus 33 when Moses asked God to show him his glory. And in reply, God speaks to him his name. I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. The way to see God's glory is to hear his name, to know the name YHWH, the, the merciful and gracious one, is not to merely know something about God. It is to know God himself. God showed himself by speaking his name. So, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 13 tells us to take our oath in God's name. But in Matthew 5 and verse 34, Jesus tell, tells us, do not swear an oath at all. Is this contradictory? We get a clue in verses 35 and 36, when it says that they made oaths by heaven, by earth, by Jerusalem, or even by their own head. It was not uncommon for people to make hasty promises which were backed by items in the temple, all kinds of things. It was not uncommon for people to make all hasty promises that were backed by all kinds of things, including foreign gods. A promise, see, a promise was only seen as good as what it was backed by. For example, if I told you that I would give you a million dollars and you know that I'm broke, then my word has no meaning to you. But if I tell you that I'm going to give you a million dollars and I swear by my father who is a millionaire, then my word may have some meaning. Thing though, the scripture says that we should only take our oaths in God's name. But Jesus says not to swear an oath at all. So what do we do? Well, we do as he says in verses 37. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Who would willingly take a gift from Satan or quote his words? No one. But many people inadvertently do it. Anything beyond yes or no are possibly and in all likelihood words that Satan has given you to say. For example, in the book of Acts, an account is given of a married couple 
who lied to the apostles. Let us look at Acts 5 and verse 13. Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? Ananias thought that the plan to deceive Peter and the words that he used came from himself. But Peter pointed out that they in fact came from Satan, who filled his heart. We have to be careful of what we say. Vows that are made without a proper plan or a desire to fulfill them come from the corruption of men's natures. It comes from pride and dishonesty. There is a thought that all men are liars. They cannot be trusted. And so, because men cannot believe what the other have to say, it is thought that unless they swear upon some holy sacrament or upon God's name it's him itself, then the words that come out of their mouth or the promise that they've made cannot be trusted. Christians, to the credit of the Lord, should avoid all things that are evil. And this means that we are to also avoid the appearance of evil things. So let us say nothing more than what we mean and mean everything that we say. In Psalm 15, reading from verses 1 to 5, it reads, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live in your holy, on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor, and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe with the, against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. So we see that it is accredited to our righteousness, keeping an oath even when it hurts and not changing our minds. Our walk is considered blameless. This kind of integrity, this kind of resolve, this unwavering mindset, we see all of this in Jesus when he died at the cross. He said, Lord, if it is your will, then let your will be done. And he meant it as we saw in his, in his actions when he gave himself to be crucified so that we may have a chance at salvation. Speaking of giving my word, some of you know that I oversee the productions for the services that we have on, on Sundays and on Wednesdays. When I accepted the responsibility, I did it with joy. I thought of it as a great honor, and I still do, to be able to serve God in this way, to help to get his message out. And I thought it would be easy because I would be surrounded by talented individuals who have a heart to serve God and will go above and beyond to ensure that what we do is excellent and that God is honored by what, by what we produce. Now, I wasn't wrong. I am surrounded by talented individuals who do go above and beyond to serve God because it is their desire to do so. They have a very strong conviction about it. What I was wrong about is that how easy it would be. Working with people, help going with the technical aspect of things, I thought it would be simply giving gentle reminders for the persons that get, do the different parts of service so that we could get them, put them together, and have them ready to be shown for Sunday morning. But as obstacles come up, as issues arise that are beyond our control, it, become, it became more and more difficult to meet the kind of timeline that we envisioned because we, had an, we have an ideal timeline of how things work. And for the most part, Everything is done within that time frame. But whenever things occur, 
that throw us out of the loop, it makes me wonder if accepting this was the right thing to do because it becomes so difficult to keep up with this and my other responsibilities. Now, I struggled with this for a time and in my quiet time I came upon this verse in Matthew 5 which says, simply let your yes be yes, and I was convicted by it. I gave my word that I would be responsible for whatever happens. I gave my word. It was not asked of me to do so. What they did was present an opportunity and tell me what obstacles I may face in ensuring that the work is complete. I accepted. And because I gave my word, I'm being convicted by this scripture in Matthew 5. I, th I thought that it would be to the glory of God to ensure that I get, do what I said I would do, that I fulfilled my word, that my yes be yes, no matter what that meant. I had an idea of what I was getting myself into, and I said yes. So, in order to be a, a man of integrity, I have to follow through on my word. It is a position that I have put myself in because I said yes. If I was to give any advice based on my experiences, it would be this. Good intentions can sometimes get you in trouble. There are times that we want to serve because we want to help but we are not always realistic about what it is that we can do. And I would say that we need to think before we commit. We need to see, see whether it is within our abilities to, to, to carry out what we are saying yes to. That anything that we give our word to, that we mean it, that it is to our knowledge true. It will not be easy every step of the way. And your feelings may change. Initially, when you say yes to something, you may feel great about it. And along the way, the difficulty of it or even other factors outside of what you've agreed to may come and make you feel that, boy, this is now burdensome. What was once a joy is now burdensome. What was once thought as to be easy is proving difficult. But we need to not be swayed. As the scripture said in Psalm 15, even when it hurts, and it may hurt in different ways, but we should follow through on it. And in this way, we can be seen as blameless and trustworthy. In conclusion, brothers, sisters, and friends, today, many people say, I swear to God, like it's just a slang, whether they mean it or not. Jesus tells us, do not do this. Do not swear at all. The Lord's name is sovereign, and it is not meant to be invoked flippantly or used irre irreverently. Do not break your word, but do everything that you pledged to do. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Let us at this time pray for the communion. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning giving you thanks for life. Father, we thank you for your Son who was the perfect example of how we ought to live our lives. We thank you for his teachings and his sacrifice, for his body, for the bread that we are about to take off which represents his body and the wine which represents his blood. I pray that we take it understanding what it is that we do to give thanks for the life that he lived so that we may be saved. I pray that the, with the message this morning, we understand just how powerful your name is and that we should use it only when it is necessary, Father, or to give you praise. I pray that we'll, there is a conviction that we can be like your son with integrity, that our yes will be yes, and our no be no. I pray all these things through Jesus' name. Amen.
the announcements. We would like to welcome our brother Howard Hope who was restored to the fellowship in the Montego Bay region last week. He's the husband of Tanisha Hope. Midweek service, the final lesson of the midweek devotion series on the fruit of the spirit will be on self-control and will be delivered by Brian and Michelle Santos who are well known by most of us here in Jamaica. The Zoom link will be sent before 7.30 p.m. service. Marriage Devotion. The last session of Marriage on the Rocks workshop will be held this Thursday online at 7 p.m. Please remember to do your homework and join early to properly prepare for the class. Teams and Campus Devotion. The Zoom links will be sent for the Team Devotion this Friday starting at 5 p.m. and the Campus Devotion which will start at 6 p.m. Options for sending your offering. Card transaction can be done at the church office. You may visit the church office on Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, between the hour of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Deposits can also be made to the church bank account and also online banking transfer. Please call the office at 876-920-4220 for banking details. Then call or email the details of the deposit after it is made. For U.S. contribution, use the address paypal.me slash kcocinja children's ministry classes online the first children ministry class on sunday will be for the two to four age group which will begins at 9 a.m the five to seven age group will be at 9 30 a.m followed by the eight to nine class which will be at 11 a.m. The preteens will start at 12 noon. Next Sunday's service, join us here online for the next Sunday worship service starting at 10 a.m. Our speaker will be Gregory Fall. Thank you. Notice is hereby given that the annual general meeting of the Kingston Church of Christ will be held online on the Zoom platform on Friday, August 14, 2020 at 7 o'clock p.m. for the purpose of transacting the following business. 1. To receive the Church's audited financial statements for the year ended December 31, 2019, the Auditor's Report and the Chairman's Report. 2. To elect Directors. The Directors retiring from office by rotation, pursuant to the Articles of Association of the Church are Dr. Peter Swaby and Mr. Trevor Kidu. Both have offered themselves for re-election. The remaining five existing directors will continue to serve until their term in office expires by rotation. 3. To ratify the appointment of Joseph Kelly as director. Mr. Kelly was appointed by the board to serve in that capacity and was officially recognized and received at the board meeting held on April 7, 2020. 4. To appoint Lafria Accounting and Management Consultants as auditor 
at a remuneration to be fixed by the directors. 5. Any other business for which due notice has been given. A member entitled to attend and vote at this meeting may appoint a proxy to attend and vote in his or her stead. Proxy forms must be lodged at the church's registered office at 22G Old Hope Road, Suite 11 Kingston 5, at least 48 hours before the time appointed for holding the meeting, which will be Wednesday, August 12, 2020. Alternatively, forms may be emailed to kcocnja at gmail.com by the same date. Colin J. Lucene, Secretary, July 16, 2020, from the registered office, 22G Old Hope Road, Suite 11, Kingston 5. We've come to the close of our worship service, but we'll still like to connect with you, so please join us back next week Sunday at our YouTube channel, Kingston Church of Christ, at 10 a.m. If you have any questions for us, or if you'd like to study the Bible, please send an email to kcoc in ja at gmail.com. Thanks for coming. See you next week. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Price and I am the Campus Minister of the Kingston Church of Christ. If you enjoy our videos and you haven't as yet, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. This will allow YouTube to send you notifications each time we upload something new.